you're going to see is the lock screen. And you unlock the lock screen in a very different way. You sign to unlock the device. Unlike other devices where you have a very typical unlock sequence, here you just have to unlock by signing. And when you sign in, you find that you are on a grid. The grid is your home screen. It's an endless space where you can throw around your app the way you want it. I can move very quickly, or I can just pan around slowly the way I want. There are different clusters. There's a media cluster, there's a music cluster. Clusters are like folders. You organize it, you keep it the way you like it. So you don't have to page anymore like you do with the iPhone or the Android devices. Now you have an endless grid, and you can organize your app the way you want it. Um, I can also collapse a cluster. I can also expand a cluster. So the, you can have a smaller grid if you like. I'm just, I, if I keep collapsing it, you'll be able to see your grid clearer. But if I expand it, it will show you all the folders or all the apps within that cluster itself. And if you notice right here, there's a grid map. The grid map tells you exactly where you, where you are in the grid. So I could pan around and get there very quickly. I can just snap and just tab to get where I want to get to as well. So I could pan by using my fingers and scan around the, the home screen, or I can use the grid map to get to where I want to, or just tab to get there very, very quickly. So let's just see how we want to organize the clusters. On the grid, we have what we call the clusters. So if you look at the grid, you find a media cluster, you find a music cluster, all of these are like your folders. I can collapse to get the folders closed, or the clusters closed. I can expand to have the clusters expanded. And when you close the cluster, you will push it and allow it to get to space so that you can see your grid in a clearer fashion. If I wanted to organize it or unopen the cluster, I can do just that, and that's exactly what I just did. And if I wanted to change my background, I just tap on the grid map, change background, and that will allow me to change the background that I like. And in this case, I'm going to choose, um, let's, let me choose another background here. I just apply that, and my background has changed. I'm panning the grid again like I did, and if you notice, the background of the grid has a perspective to it, so it feels alive rather than being static. If I wanted to organize my clusters or organize my apps, I can do that very easily. I just tap on the organizer again, click on Edit Grid, and I press to hold to move an app out of the cluster. When I move it out to an empty space, that will become an app by itself. If I move another one and get it together with the previous one, that will create a cluster. And in this case, I'm just going to call the cluster. I don't want to create the cluster. I forget that. I basically move on. If I want to move this one instead, I can do that. Press and hold. That helps to create another cluster again because I'm pairing it. And let's just leave it as group for now and say done. So, and that creates a new cluster called the group. And if I'm done, I just apply, and that fixes the changes that I need. So let's click on messages to see email. That will bring me to Message Center. And there you have it, the traditional email, where I can scroll to see my different messages. Tap on that. That will bring up a new message. Tap on that. It changes the message view. But one of the unique things about our email is, when you get attachments like this, I can just tap on the attachment, and that will zoom in and get into a photo view mode. Because it's an attachment and it's a photo, you now can view it in photo mode. I just pan around to get back to a new photo that I want. I can just move backwards to the previous one, and I can go forward to another one. So it's basically seamless. I go backwards to get back to where I want to get to. So what I did was a back gesture that brings me back to my email client. So this device doesn't have any buttons. It's all gesture-based. If I want to get back to home, I just do a top-down swipe, and that gets me to home. You looked at that animation? That's what we call motion picture class animations. I'm going to move around the grid again to show you other stuff. Let's get back to email again to show you a unique view of email. In email view, um, the other thing that I can do is tap the same email again. That will bring up the message window. And over here, I can swipe through the photos that I have as well. So it's pretty seamless and allows me to see a slideshow from within the email as well. And apart from that, if I wanted to see a totally different view of email, I can type on, tap on grid. That will bring up my grid view, which organizes my emails based on importance. So different sizes, different colors means different things. I'm going to go back to home again. And let's do different stuff right now. Let's go to the browser. 
the unique thing about our browser is what we call a Chromeless browser because it allows you to have a Chromeless browsing experience. So if I tap on the screen, you see nothing. You see no Chrome. If I want to bring up the Chrome, I just swipe from the edge and that brings up my tabs. I can move through my tabs by just moving my thumb. If I wanted to um, close one of it, I just tap on that and it closes the browser or closes the tab. If I wanted more controls, I tap on open and that gives me different options. If I didn't want those again, I just close it back again and that minimizes the options. If I want to add a new tab, I just hit a new tab and that will bring up a new tab. Let's just change the URL to something else. Let me just tap on that. That will bring up the keyboard. And let me just type Google instead. And what you see happening here is you see different options. All the suggestions that you see right here are Bing powered. I mean, it's using Bing APIs. We have Microsoft Search built into it. Over here, you get your local or your searches based on history and bookmarks. And here we have what we call star, which allows you to have intelligent options. We'll come to that in a bit. Let's just continue with going to google.com. That will launch a new tab, and you will launch a Google page. So while that is launching, if I wanted to tap back to another tab, I can do def tab. Move back again, gets me to the tab that's loading Google. And there you have it. A new page has been loaded. So if I wanted to go back to Bing, tab again, it brings back to Bing. If I didn't want the Chrome, tap, and you don't see the Chrome. You see a full screen. Bring up the gesture and move your tab to get to the next tab. Simple, easy, full screen browsing. Okay, let's look at photos right now. Let me tap on that, and that will bring up my photo album app. It has all my photo collection. I can pan around and see my different albums. It's almost like a light box. And if, let's say, I just click on one of these images, that will bring out my different photo albums, tap on that, and that shows me different albums or different photos that I have from within the album itself. Easy swipes. If I wanted to do an edit of the photo, let's say I wanted to crop this photo, I just tap on crop, and I just have to cut where I want to cut, and that basically helps me crop the photo. I'm going to save it, and that will allow me to see a safe version of this crop photo. So I'm just going to do that again. And that saves the photo, and it loads the crop photo that I just did. As you can see, this isn't just another tablet. This isn't just another OS. Grid 10 is innovation.